Hey, my name is Pat Flynn, and I'm here to make content creation easier, more fun, and profitable for you. And today I wanted to share with you my top five questions that you should be asking your guest on an interview, whether that's for a podcast, a YouTube video, or even a written interview. As you very well know, when it comes to an interview, it's the questions that the host asks that can be the difference between an episode that people pass on and an episode that is noteworthy and gets shared. So make sure you stick around because these five questions will make a huge difference in your career as an interviewer. And make sure you stick around to the end because the final one is in fact the most powerful that I've used in almost every single podcast episode that I've done. Right before we dive in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, hit that bell notification icon too so you can get more videos like this to help take your content to the next level. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the Smart Passive Income Podcast. Over 400 plus episodes there or the Ask Pat Podcast with over a thousand episodes there to help you take your business to the next level. All right, let's count down, starting with number five. Why, 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 why? You know, I think we're conditioned to just believe that this question, why, is so annoying, right? We typically hear about kids asking this again, why, 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 why? I have a couple kids myself and I completely understand how annoying it can be. As an interviewer, this is your most powerful tool because when it comes to the content that you're collecting from the person you're interviewing, when a person answers your questions, they're gonna answer with a surface level answer. It's this question as a follow-up, why? That helps them continue to go further and deeper, which is where the gold lies. So don't be afraid to ask why. In fact, your audience is gonna be very appreciative because if they don't understand why something is happening the way it is or what a person is saying, then you on their behalf are going deeper so that they can understand too. Why is also great because it allows for reasoning behind certain decisions that were made too. And I don't think it's annoying at all. Now, obviously you don't wanna just use that one word actually that would be a fun challenge if i could do a complete podcast interview just asking that question why the entire time that would be really funny i'll save that for a later date anyway next let's get to number four now this question that you should be asking comes from the fact that a person who you're interviewing is likely not wanting to be rude and as such they might stop in the middle of the story or come to a pause such that you the host can take it whatever direction you want I recommend if you like the story that's being told and you wanna learn more, in addition to asking questions like why, if that makes sense, ask this, what happened next? And I love this because essentially what you're doing is you're giving permission to the person who's telling the story or talking to keep going further. And this is yet another way to go levels deeper when it comes to the answers to surface level questions that you start with. All right, next up, number three. This is for those of you in the back as well in case you're not paying attention. All right, number three, I love this one because oftentimes you don't just wanna get facts and answers, you wanna get feelings, you wanna bring emotion. When you can have emotion come out in your interviews, whether that's happiness, sadness, laughter, whatever the case might be, when you bring emotion to the table as the host, it's better off for your show, it's more likely to be something that resonates with your audience, to be shared, to be remembered. So the question I recommend you ask is this, how are you really feeling in this moment? What were you feeling when this was happening? What was going through your mind? This is often the moment in certain interviews that I've done when the person who I'm interviewing, in fact, begins to either laugh or even cry. And there's been many cases on my show when the guest have, has cried and I don't do it on purpose, although I kind of like it, because that means it's real. And if a person on the other end of my interview is crying, likely it's hitting the mark for the person who is listening as well. I've had people reach back out to me and said, I've never cried listening to a podcast episode before, or I've never laughed so hard. What was your gut reaction when all that went down? Take that, use it, I promise it'll work. Next, number two. And this one actually comes from a book called Never Split the Difference. And in this book, there is a tactic that a FBI negotiator uses to help get more information from the person who has the hostages in whatever crazy situation might be happening. And the technique is called mirroring. We mirror the person who just answers one of our questions. The way mirroring works is you simply repeat the same few last words that a person just said when they finish their thought. And by doing that and actually creating an intonation that's sort of like a question, it's essentially another way to give permission to the person you're interviewing to keep going. The fact that you want to know more about it. And it's very simple because you don't have to make up any of the words. You just have to repeat the same words. So it might go down like this. If you're interviewing somebody and you're asking them about their favorite tool of the year, perhaps 2020, that they've used in their business, they might answer like this. Oh, one of my favorite tools is called Ecamm Live. It's a streaming platform that you can use to even do interviews and bring guests on. And I absolutely love it because I have been going live every day. 
You've been going live every day? Yeah, I've been going live for over 200 days on YouTube and it's been really neat to connect with the audience there. Connect with the audience? How? Well, you know, it's live and so there's 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 a really intimate interaction with the people who seem to be there and I've gotten to know many of them by name now. You see how this can just continually move forward by just simply mirroring, but by mirroring, that person is essentially guiding the conversation themselves and you all you have to do is just repeat the last few final words in that sentence. Try it in the next conversation that you have, even if it's not an interview, maybe with a spouse or a kid. See what mirroring does. I promise you it's going to unlock some really cool things. All right, let's finish off with the number one strategy for how to pull out the best information from the person that you're interviewing. And I think we all know that the best kind of thing that you can get from somebody is a story. Stories are relatable. People are just fine tuned since we're babies to listen to stories. And in fact, it transports us to that place and makes things more real. So your job is to pull a story from this person. So I learned this tip from Alex Bloomberg from Gimlet Media and also the creator of the startup podcast on a creative live that I once watched. And he shared this strategy. He simply said, if you want to get a story from somebody, phrase it like this. Tell me about a time when blank. Blank being whatever the topic is. Tell me about a time you ran a Facebook ad campaign and it didn't go according to plan. Tell me about a time when you went live in front of your audience and the technology failed on you. This was literally yesterday. Tell me about a time when you wanted to give up on your workout, but you kept going anyway. I guess technically that's not a question, but in fact, what it is you're doing is you're asking for the story. You're giving a person permission to tell the story. And then your job after all of these questions is to sit back and listen, which is often, especially for a podcaster, one of the hardest things to do. Yes, as a podcaster, listening is actually quite hard because you're thinking about the next question. But here's the other tip. When it comes to interviewing, yes, listen, but also be genuinely curious. All of these tips here relate to this idea of being genuinely curious. That will guide you as you continue forward in your interviewing career. So good job. Use those questions. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Which of these five questions, in fact, are the most powerful for you and you're going to try out? Have you ever tried any of these? How do they work out for you? Let me know in the comment section below. And again, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button so you can get more information to take your content to the next level. Again, I'm here to make it easy for you, here to make it fun, and here to make it profitable. Thanks so much. I'm Pat Flynn. Check out this video right here if you're ready for another one. I got another sweet video for you, and I look forward to uh, helping you out soon. Peace out. Thanks so much. And Team Flynn for the win.